Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, the last time I made a little wristlet video, you guys seemed to really enjoy it. I so loved seeing you guys, uh, what you guys made posted in the sewing group, which is actually in the link down below if you haven't joined. Um, so in this one, we are going to make the For the Love of Change pouch, which is my pattern <laughs> uh, that I released a little over a year ago now. This is the size small, and I used leather from Springfield Leather Company. Uh, this is a holographic leather that I am obsessed with, uh, but they only had small scraps last time I went to the store. And then this one almost looks like a DNA, which is really fun. Uh, this is a great little pattern. Uh, we made it using leather and quilting cotton, uh, along with SF-101 and a little bit of scrap piping we had left over. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like. There are two sizes included in the pattern. There's a size small and there's a large. And you could um, customize this any way you wanted to. Instead of adding the heart, you could decide to add um, like a little Mickey Mouse head or, um, you know, I saw someone, she made Luna glasses from Harry Potter and it was so cute. Uh, Anastasia, that was amazing. You might not be watching this, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know at the end if you did, and don't forget to subscribe. All right, so in this video, we are going to be making the For the Love of Change pouch. This um, is my own pattern, and I do sell it. I believe it's like 350 on my website, and there are two sizes. There's a small and a large, but you could also make a medium size. You can make it bigger, smaller whatever you'd like. Um, this is the pattern template which is available through topsandbobbins.com. I will include the link for that down below. Uh, these just make it so much quicker, so much easier, and um, even more precise when making these, especially if you're making a bunch of them all at once. They come in handy. Um, this pattern was made way before I ever carried these um, awesome little vinyl wristlet straps. So these do make it so much faster. I would recommend purchasing them if you are making a whole bunch of these for like a craft show or Christmas gifts. And what you're gonna do is you're going to punch a hole at the very end on both sides and then another one that is about an uh, 1.75 inches in. So there's a total of three holes here. You'll slide your snap hook through one and then just line up all of those holes through that and then add the cap through the rivet post. And then you can use your rivet press to set that rivet. And then you have a really quick, awesome wristlet strap. So easy to make. Um, I do have these available coming soon in a bunch of other colors um, as well as crossbody length, which will save you guys so much time. All right, so grab my template here. I'm using leather to make this, so I didn't need any interfacing on the exterior. Um, and so I'm also not going to do a reverse applique heart because I didn't want to cut up any of this leather. But I am going to add an applique heart of this holographic leather I'm so excited about. So. I, go, I went ahead and I traced the heart template that comes with the pattern. It's actually just this piece completely removed. And I'm going to line up all of the edges and then lay this right inside. And I did use spray adhesive on the back. You could also use tape. But now it's perfectly placed. And oh, it looks amazing. I'm so excited. Um, and then I also cut out lining fabric and backed it with SF 101 and then I have my zipper and that's pretty much all you need. Um, piping is optional. Um, I know I have a bunch of scrap pieces of piping. I'm not sure. I think I'll use pink because I'm making it for me. So I'm going to go ahead and iron my piping and this is just pre-made piping. Okay, so I can use the pattern piece to kind of tell me where the piping goes. Never mind. It starts, uh, I believe, an inch from the top. Yeah, 
that seems right. Maybe half an inch. It's half an inch. Yeah, it's half an inch. I'm so sorry, you guys. I didn't reread the pattern <laughs> before I started this. Um, so, yeah. You're just going to clip it along the outside edge. Now that we're getting close to the other side, I'm just going to lay my little ruler on top and then twist that, kind of fold that at a 90 degree angle off to the side and add a clip. Whoops. And the, um, this pattern is a really great way to use up little scraps of some of your favorite fab fabrics. Favorite fabrics. All right, so I've got my sewing machine all turned on, ready to go. My thread is threaded, and I'm going to trace along the outer edge of the piping. Not trace, sew. And you want to hit right up next to it, not through it, just right next to the piping on the side. Um, you can add a D-ring strap or connector that is optional. I'm going to be using a handbag zipper, so I am not going to add a D-ring uh, because the handbag zipper pull is long enough you can add your wristlet strap. So it just kind of saves you a little bit of time. Plus, I always seem to forget to add it, so I was like, may as well just leave it off. So there is our piping added. I'm going to sew around the outside edge one more time just so that the back this side edge of the piping doesn't decide to come loose and hang out in our seam. Uh, the leather I'm using is from springfieldleather.com. Springfieldleathercompany.com. Anyway, the link is going to be down below. Uh, so I'm going to use a stitch length of four to applique this heart on. Uh, you don't need to use this heart shape. I've seen so many people use some of the funnest shapes. Um, or you can completely remove the shape. You could use your embroidery machine to uh, embroider some really cool things inside to feature. Um, yeah, that's up to you. I'm just going really slowly along the outside edge of the heart. And this process is called applique. Um, and then you can do the opposite, which is called reverse applique, where you cut from the top fabric and sew underneath. Then I'm going to use this thread zap to, the link is definitely down below, to seal off the ends of the thread so that it doesn't start to fray. Make sure you don't hit it on your leather because you could burn it. Oh, this should be all the way in. There we go. Now we've got better connectivity heating element so there is the front piece all finished and now I'm going to iron my zipper I'm using a seven inch zipper you can use an all-purpose or a handbag zipper whatever strikes your fancy 
So I'm gonna lay my zipper face down and it should be just about end to end. If not, you wanna make sure that your zipper pull starts at your piping and the zipper end is at the other side of your piping. And I'm going to turn my zipper at a 90 degree angle. If you prefer to use zipper tabs, feel free. Um, I myself am not the biggest fan of them, but I understand that they're necessary sometimes. Get all my leather fuzz off of there. So you can choose to baste your zipper in place now or just lay your lining fabric over top. I'm just using a lot of these clips. Uh, these clips are from Sally Beauty. They are just a uh, one inch prong hair clips. Um, I haven't been able to find like an Amazon link to provide you guys, but you can also find them pretty much in any beauty supply shop. So now I'm going to carefully iron this from the lining side. I'm not going to apply any steam to my leather because that could be bad. Pull it over. And now I've got it folded completely over. I'm going to top stitch from the start of my zipper to the end, but I'm not sewing all the way across. I'm gonna grab my thread zap again and zap those threads. This is just a really quick um, little zipper pouch that has a more fun shape than the standard square. Um, these make great little gifts. You could even have custom fabric printed and put it as the heart as like a picture of a family member or Something like that, it's a really fun way to personalize a gift. So we're gonna repeat that last step and add the zipper. Make sure you turn the ends at a 90 degree angle if you're not using zipper tabs. This just gives it a little bit more of a professional look so you don't see the ends of your zipper. And then grab your other lining piece and lay that over top. Never enough clips, you guys, never enough. Okay, and then I'm just gonna open it up and iron it from the lining side. And make sure if you're using leather, do not use any steam because that little bit of water could warp your leather. You don't want that. Okay, so now we're going to top stitch again. You only want to go from where the zipper starts to where the zipper ends. Back stitch, back stitch. Back stitch. Now we're ready to, um, if you want, you could add a nameplate to this pouch or um, this is when you'd wanna maybe add your D-ring, which you can follow the pattern for the directions on where to add that. But I'm gonna unzip my zipper about halfway and I'm gonna bring my right sides together, uh, exterior to exterior, lining to lining. Your zipper is going to be pushed into the lining and your side seams should open up all the way so that you don't get any strange puckering. And then I'm gonna clip these all together. And I'm gonna be sewing it from the piping side so that I know 
you know, where to sew so that I can catch that piping and make, make it nice and tight. And leather has a tendency to kind of stretch as you sew, so that's why I'm adding all these clips, just because I don't want anything to kind of stretch out while I'm sewing it. All right, my lining pieces, I actually cut one a little bit bigger, so that's my fault. If you want to, you can trim it down or just kind of remember that it's like that. We're gonna start at the corner curve. So where it's still straight is where we're gonna start sewing using a small stitch length, maybe a 3.5 or a 4, and just go around that curve. I'm using a wider seam allowance than I will on the exterior of the bag, just so the lining isn't too saggy. I'm just going to go real slow. Coming in a little bit from my first piping stitch line, so that we catch that nice and tight. And this pattern is also a really great way to kind of slowly learn how to work with piping. You can actually feel it with your finger along that seam as well. And you don't want to sew through it, you just want to sew right next to it um, to catch that cording. And then there might be a drop in the bulkiness from one seam to the other. So just go really slow so you don't hurt your leather. And then after that curve is where you want to back stitch and you want to leave that whole wide long piece open. Make sure you caught all of your seams. Everything's been sewn. And then we're going to trim the excess especially around the, the top of the zipper. You don't want to trim the excess where you haven't sewn. So now we've just got these little bit of scraps cut away. I don't know where my trash can went, of course. <laughs> so now we're gonna berth this little zipper pouch through the hole in the lining. push out those corners. You can see how nice and tight that piping looks in that side seam. Make sure you give extra special care when pushing out these side corners. And I just kind of run my fingers through that curve. And now we can sew this shut, push out the curve. And then I just kind of pull on those corners and tuck it in and sew across the opening. Okay. And then tuck that all inside. And then you can add your little wristlet strap to the zipper pull. And you've got this super cute little, little leather zipper pouch that is great for gift giving or a good seller at shows, what have you. Look at that holographic leather. Oh my goodness. Then I just use the solid leather on the back. Let me open it up. It's really cute for just little things. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit the subscribe button right over there. Um, and feel free to watch the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you plan on making it. 
and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!